the best short films for lifelong learning, recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love, with your host, Richard Lee. Well, let's get to the first film that you've recommended, Abbott and Costello, Who's On First? <laughs> well, let's see now. We have on our team, we have Who's On First, What's On Second, I Don't Know Who's On Third. That's what I want to find and out, that, the guy's name. And that, uh -huh. That's what I want to find out, the guy's name. I'm telling you, Who's On First, What's On Second, I Don't Know Who's On Third. Now, Abbott, you want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's names? Well, I should. Well, now you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team. I say, Who's On First, What's On Second, I Don't Know Who's On Third. You ain't saying nothing to me yet. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> I'm telling him. Well, you talked about using this in the context of reading fluency. So I, I, my first question was, you know, do you actually have the whole exact transcript or script available for that somewhere that students read from? Tell me how that works. I did a shortened version for my third graders, but the longer one for my fourth and fifth. And um, yeah, so they did have the whole transcript <laughs> in front of them. Um, and it was Awesome. <laughs> and that's what Ruth does such a great job of is engaging those kids. Um, you know, these are older students who um, really, you know, they don't want to practice their reading. They feel like they know how to read, um, even though their rate is very slow and needs to pick up so that um, their comprehension will improve as well. Ruth does an amazing job of going outside the box to look for ways um, to keep these older kids engaged in that repeated reading because uh, most of those older kids do not want to read the same thing more than once. Yeah, so you're adding in this performance element. You're encouraging students to really get into it and I, I guess even do it a number of times and try and get faster like Abbott can Costello themselves, yeah. Yeah. And that was really fun um, because uh, the faster they read it, the... the um, the more they wanted to read it again with a different partner because they're like, oh, well, you're reading it just as fast as I am, <laughs> which then, you know, caused a little bit of tension of like, well, I, I can read it faster. And um, <laughs> and so then there's the, there was a really high engagement and they really did want to keep going because they kept comparing themselves to the video of like, oh, well, I had, I just, I sounded like totally like him. <laughs> So it was really cool. Beautiful. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which we've chosen as For the Birds. Bye. When I first started using this, I used this with my third graders, and I also ended up using it with my first graders, too. Um, what I noticed is in their writing um, is that they have a really hard time telling a complete story. Um, often it will be like you just throw in a character and <laughs> throw out a problem, and magically the first time they resolve it and the story is done, and the story is about this big in about three sentences. Mm -hmm. um, and I we were looking for different ways and I was picking um, Debbie's brain about how to, how do you teach kiddos how to write a story? We know how to tell them, but we can't seem to translate to that to how do we write them. Right. Um, and so uh, Debbie had recommended uh, kind of trying some different strategies. We had found a story template um, and then we started she had started introducing videos, and so we started using a, a video <laughs> clip, and I found the Pixar, uh, and loved the Pixar. They, the kids got to watch it the first time, and they loved it and enjoyed it, and then we watched it again, and at different points, I would stop it, and they had to map the story, um, and it, it was only after repeated mapping of lots of different stories did they finally see there's a pattern. There's that introduction. There's that problem that the character tries to resolve it. They fail. They try again. They fail. And then there's finally this um, the climax and then falling action and they're able to solve it. And their stories got so much better. Um, but I remember telling Debbie it was like six weeks of, you know, continually of the we do doing it together because but it was it was almost like they had to memorize that pattern they just it it was so much easier to do with someone else's work because there are no words the students really have to infer which is also another great skill that they don't get a lot of practice with is 
deferring what's going on. And so part of that story structure had little uh, two little people, um, and we colored one as the crow or you know, some exotic bird, and the one as the bluebirds, and they had to put emotion with it. So we were kind of building up their vocabulary. That was really cool because they were able to say, you know, um, <laughs> well, the crow right now is oblivious. He thinks this is great. And all the other ones are, you know, feeling like superior and they don't want to be his friend. And um, so it was really cool to actually have kids kind of explain why. And they came up with the craziest reasons of why they didn't want to be his friend. Like, uh, obviously, he smells bad, and it, well, why, why do you think that? Well, because he does, and well, what ev- what evidence do you have that supports that? Well, nothing, but it's just weird. You should just trust me, he just smells bad. <laughs> if I knew then, a letter to me on my first day of teaching. Dear Lila. Dear Joey. Dear first year me. Hola. Hey kid. Remember when dad said that the first six months of anything is the hardest? Well, that is completely true here. Everything is going to be okay. Things may seem tough right now, and at times you may feel like you want to give up, but please don't. Just know that you'll make a great teacher. You are probably wondering why in the world did I ever get into this profession? Debbie, um, is this one that you use for your professional development sessions? Yes, of course. And um, in fact, I was using it last week. Um, I was working with teachers that are going to be mentoring uh, first year teachers. And, you know, we forget sometimes in our field, once we've been teaching for eight, you know, eight plus years, I think we forget what that first year was like. Um, and we forget the depth of knowledge um, that we have gained over the years. We just do so much that we don't even think about anymore. Um, and so it's so important for us to put ourselves in those shoes of that first year teacher. When a kid says your class is boring, don't take it personally. It happens to everyone. This is something I use with my mentors um, to help them work with those first year teachers and to help them think back what was my first year like. Um, because I think sometimes as colleagues, we can get frustrated with some of the uh, first year teachers because they're like, they're not like me. They're, they're not, they don't balance a hundred things at once, you know, like I can do now. Um, and we weren't always like that. We didn't start out that way. And so it's a nice reminder. I think it's important that we go to those first year teachers and they're constantly encouraging them and uh, keeping those teachers in the field because they're amazing and they just need lots of support. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today.